people how you guys doing man everybody doing good everybody doing good all right so let's um let me make sure i got my uh i got my i, I got my youtube going you guys see me we looking good make sure i got my youtube going Make sure Facebook is is rolling. We streaming Facebook tonight too, man. Yes, we streaming Facebook tonight too. Let me see if Facebook come in. Let let me know if you in and um on YouTube. Y'all good? Cool, cool. No cap. All right. Give a little time. Let me see if my let me see if Facebook is gone. Says way in. I don't know what's going on. I never did the Facebook before, so never, never did the Facebook. So we'll see. We'll see how that work out. Cool. Got my guy GT in the building tonight. Gonna have a lot of fun, man. Gonna have a lot of fun. Y'all don't think you here? Y'all don't think he here? Oh, yeah. He here. He in the building. He's here. Gonna be a lot of fun, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Just waiting. For some reason, I, I'm not seeing my Facebook jump up. But maybe um, maybe it is. Maybe it ain't. I don't know. Um, But Let's get into it because we got a we got a jam packed show tonight. We got a lot going on, so um, let's get right into it, man. Let's get right into it. I'm glad you guys uh, joined in, man. I actually like I actually love doing these shows. It's actually it's a adrenaline rush, man. You know, and and after not playing, um, after not playing, you can't, you know, you don't you don't get that same rush you know so this is uh this is actually this is actually pretty cool it's actually pretty cool man i'm not seeing my facebook okay i'm not seeing my facebook so i'm gonna i'm gonna do the facebook real quick because i want to do it on facebook too man this is this is gonna be epic okay this is gonna be epic tonight Got a great show. I got some good questions for you, GT. I hope you're ready for this. I hope you're ready for this. Let me um let me let me do let me get my Facebook real quick. Okay. For some reason my for some reason it says Oh, there we go. Now I can see myself. Good. Oh, my wife said they can't hear me and they can't see me. So we are good, man. We rolling. We rocking, man. Like I was saying, this show gets me going, man. Uh, give me a rush. I haven't had that rush in a long time. So I love doing it. It's good. I hope you guys enjoy watching them as much as I like doing them. As a matter of fact, if you do enjoy these shows, please tell a friend, share it with a friend. Maybe they will enjoy these shows as well. Also on this channel, I try to do some football stuff weekly to teach you guys. Football season is coming up. Hopefully they get to play. So if you want to know what's going on, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. OK, hopefully you guys like it. We are on YouTube and Facebook tonight. Like I said, this is going to be epic. It's going to be dope. We also upload this audio of these shows to uh, iTunes. For a podcast. So if you're just driving around, you know somebody that don't like getting on these YouTube or Facebook and they just like to listen to stuff, 
we got an option for them too. So there's literally no excuse if you want to hear this info. You know what I'm saying? So I got to say all that stuff, obviously, promote the channel, promote what we got going on. So I appreciate you guys for all your support. But enough of that. Let's hop into the show. I just love doing that, man. Tonight's show is going to be a special one. Like I said, we got New York Giants wide receiver Golden Tate in the DB room tonight. He's the first non-DB in the room. The first. Okay, so we also have another special guest that's going to join us a little later on in the show. So make sure you stick around for that. It's going to be good. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, like I said, I do these shows to get, you know, more people more information about football but also to get you guys to know more about your favorite players right you get to know us for who we are not just what we do also i like to inspire people and motivate people hopefully we have some kids high schoolers watching this stuff they can hear another person's story or journey and be inspired on their own journey because they will cross these bridges at some point and like i said man like to educate people. Knowledge is power. Boom. Let's get into it. Let's roll. Bomba. My guy, Golden Tate, came to Detroit 2014. 2014, man. Immediately made an impact on and off the field. Guy with a huge personality, competitive drive, and a huge heart to give back. We're going to talk about all that stuff. Golden is a husband, a father, and a fantastic football player. Let's bring him in and talk to him. Everybody, please welcome Golden Tate to the show. <laughs> What up, what up, what up, how we doing? Good, good, man. How you doing, brother? I'm great, man. Uh, happy to be on, man. I, shoot, it's been a minute since I've seen you, brother. <laughs> Long minute, man. Long minute, man. You looking good, man. You fit? You ready? Uh, I'm getting there. I got a little bit of time, so, but, <laughs> but I'm getting there. Uh, I don't know if it's me, but I look like a Smurf on the screen right now. I look you. blue. You look blue. Is that normal? Um, I mean, you look good to me. All right, cool. Maybe good. it's just my, maybe it's my my Mac. Uh, a little worried. I'll send you a picture of what it looked like. Cool, cool. Hold on one sec. Are we are we are we live on uh, YouTube? Looks like it. I hope so. Hmm. Okay. Hey. It, 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 we're, it, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing us on Facebook. I'm, 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 I'm assuming that we, we are live on, on YouTube as well. Hmm. Cool. Like I said, man, shouts out to Dave Keon, always doing those dope, those, those dope highlight videos for me, man. So, um i'm glad bro you took a little time man to join the show man it's crazy you know crazy times right now so i always have to ask how have you and the family been in the quarantine you know we've uh we've been great man it's you know where we live in san diego is kind of secluded and away from things and like now that i got two kids two very young kids in the middle of the fire I really don't do too much anyway, besides go work out, go golf, you know, maybe have a few drinks at the clubhouse and then go home. So for me, it wasn't really that different. Um, right now, it's becoming different because now we're getting closer to football season. And now I'm starting to think like, dang, is it really even possible that we're going to have a season? Um, I, I know that mentally I'm trying my best to prepare 
as if we're you know going to report on July 28th and you know I would suggest all the the athletes prepare as if you're going just in case you know if you do go you're ready if you don't go you know you're still in shape but um you know it's 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 been great man um I was I'm not going to lie at first when we got put on lockdown I was a little nervous I was like I don't know if I can be around my kids all day long I don't know <laughs> right. I might be on edge cuz I daddy need his me time but honestly my son and I have bonded so much. Uh, he's one years old now. Uh, we bonded so much, and like it's to the point where he prefers dad. Dad, like he just he migrates to me wherever I am. When I leave the room, he just looks so crushed. Like he just he loves me. Uh, my daughter has enjoyed you know being hanging around dad all day, climbing up on dad all day. Dad chasing me around. Dad taking me outside. And it's it's been amazing. And my my wife, of course, is a superhero, and she has obviously enjoyed me being around to help her with things around the house and help with the kids. Uh, you know, just just be there, be present. So overall, uh, quarantine life is not not that bad. Really, that sounds good, man. I was gonna say, I'm I'm sure you guys are enjoying this this extra time off, man. I, I know. The off season gets busy, and and every time it gets close to time to get back, you start to you know feel the itch to get back, but also to the uh, itch to you know not want to leave leave home, man. So I know you guys are enjoying this time. Like when we was talking leading up, you know, you 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 had to inform me because you your guy. You, I mean, you're all over the place, man. Like you said, you know, you live in you live in Cali, you play in New York. You know, you, 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 you got it. You was born in, you know, Tennessee. So you have to let me know what, what time zone you're in. And, and you told me that you were in Nashville. So you grew up in uh, Hendersonville, which is, I'm assuming, a, a little a town on the outside of Nashville. I don't know a lot about Tennessee, man. So tell me a little bit about Hendersonville and, and what it was like growing up there. You know, um, I actually didn't move to Hendersonville until I was – pretty much like, uh, you know, going into my freshman year in high school. So, I, and I really only spent the four years of high school there and I went to college. So I, I grew up kind of in the heart of, of Nashville, uh, East Nashville, um, you know, right down the street from the famous hot chicken place called Princess Chicken. Um, you know, my, I had a great childhood. My, grand, my grandparents actually lived directly across the street from me for the majority of, of, you know, my childhood. So I could just literally go across the street and be at my grandparents' house with a big acre yard. And then, you know, my, my house, I had some amazing older friends that just used to, they kind of like bullied me, but it made me who I am now. So I don't even regret it. Like they just were bigger kids than me. And I always had to compete with the older kids. I always had to hang with them. And I think that's what aided me to be so good at, at, sports and football and baseball and basketball because I had older kids around me. But, you know, um, kids out there, uh, you know, grade schoolers and high schoolers and junior high school schools, I know you guys cannot wait to grow up. You can't wait to go to college and, and all that stuff, but enjoy, um, you know, <laughs> living at home and just literally wake up, eat, sleep, drink, whatever you want. There's no, you know, you don't have any bills. Just enjoy that because I promise you at some point it all changes. And I, I look back all the time, like, man, I miss when I was playing little league baseball. I miss when I was playing, you know, little league football. I miss, you know, just. All know, that fun get, stuff. And, you know. And, that, and that's what I was about to say. You, you, you had like, you know, pretty athletic family. I mean, obviously your dad. I mean, you got twin sisters that that can run. I mean, you got a younger brother. I mean, you say you grew up in the neighborhood, all your cousins and stuff like that. What age did did you start playing sports, or you know, did you wait later, or were you just a neighborhood playing kid, or like, when did you get started? You know, the, my my parents tell the story all the time that the, my first word was not mama, not dad, dad. It was ball. Wow. They would give me, wow. they would give me, exactly. They would give me glass bottles with, you know, with the nipples on them and I would be throwing them and shattering them. And so, you know, I, I can truly say like, I feel like my calling has been to be, you know, a professional athlete. And then something that I prayed on, you know, I didn't, I don't think I ever missed a night where I prayed 
to be a professional athlete. And I didn't know if I wanted to be baseball or football, but I prayed every single night and for it to be become a reality and a dream that's that come true. It's like, wow, God, you are so amazing and you are so loyal um, to me. But I, I started playing t-ball probably around four or five and and baseball was my first love and then as i got to like i think i might have been 10 or 11 um, my dad put me into football my mom did not want me to play football because of physicality and, really? and all the stuff that could happen but i uh, obviously uh, i fell in love with football and excelled at football and then probably a few late few years later when i was 13 14 i started playing basketball and i, I enjoyed basketball but i didn't have the same passion i had for basketball the way I did with football and baseball. But anyway, um, for me, like growing up, like you could spank me, you could you could ground me, you could not let me see my friends. But if you ever took a practice or a game away from me or threatened me that way, I would straighten up. Like I would be crushed. Really? Like I could not miss a practice. I was a guy who showed up to practice 30 minutes earlier I was a guy, you know, if we had a 7 p.m. game and the coach said be there at 6, I wanted to be there at 5.30. I was that guy who every single game I, that morning, I'm laying out the pinstripes and the belt and the hat and the cleats, you know, just like I can't even get through school that day because I'm so excited to get out there and play. And so that's just like my – that was my mentality. That was my personality. And it's like, man, I, I missed it. I, I, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. But – uh. You know, I'm thankful to be able to be 31 years old and still playing sports at a high level. Right. I mean, that's what I was about to say. So you, you say you're 31 now, but like, were were you always just good? Were you good as a four and five year old, or were you like a late bloomer? Did you did you kind of find your way later on as you got older, or were, did you hit the field running like, man, this kid right here is gonna be a star? Yeah, uh, I. I've always been the best on the team that up, up until I got to the New York giants. I felt, I felt like, um, I've always been ath athletically gifted and caught on to most athletic things very, very quickly. And I'm so thankful, um, because my sisters were not like that. They, they, you know, they caught on later. My brother kind of, peaked later but me i was always super super athletic and could do like things i look back and like dang how how was i able to do that so i'm i'm very thankful for that <laughs> wow 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 that's crazy man so you get to high school and you said you know everything kind of came easy to you so you three sport guy in high school you so you're a football player mm -hmm. you know you're rolling in baseball now you're running track i see i saw you ran Think what your fastest time in the hundred is like a ten nine, ten nine three something like that. And then you ran two hundred. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me this: How did that help you in any way? Because you know nowadays, you know they want kids to pick a sport, major in one sport. You know what I'm saying they they trying to get these kids to decide at an early age. You know AAU basketball, hey, and you got to be a basketball player all the time. You got to you got to continue working. You got to be a, a baseball player all the time not really encouraging you know multiple sports kind of like it was when when we were coming up um mm -hmm. but how did you know playing multiple sports help you you know playing football and and help you on the baseball field and stuff like that you know um i like the commitment part of like you know committing something and really dialing in but i as a parent and where i am right now and looking into the future i, I don't think i could ever have my kid focus on just one sport Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you why. I, I think I think in sports in America is, you know, it's it's kind of what it, it can be the glue of America at times. And so, um, with all the games that you can play with fantasy football and and you know, sports is always on TV. So, in my mind, if you at an early age can learn a little bit about these sports, it helps you throughout your life. I think it gives you something to talk about. It's an icebreaker. Um, and I think right now it is awkward for a lot of people to socialize because we're so stuck on our phones. We're so caught up on Instagram and Twitter and that interaction that we forget about the face-to-face -face, um, aspect of life and talking. So I think sports is a way to like just an, an icebreaker for one. But right. two, um, 
I, I don't think I would have been the, the football player that I am today without baseball. Um, before, mm. before people labeled me as a slot receiver, and when I first got to Detroit, I can go get a deep ball with the best of them. Mm. I can go time and jump over a guy to get the deep ball, um, you know, with the best of them, I, I thought in my mind. And I think that was because I was so used to catching um, – fly balls in college and in the little league and having to time them to like get under the ball, catch it, you know, crow hop, throw it all in sync. Right. That, you know, I just felt like, okay, well, if I can catch this, this little white ball, that's going to be moving, you know, I got to read the spin on it. Right. You know, how the guy, if he's a left, you're a righty kid, or if you top spin, back spin, I, if I can read that efficiently, then I can go out there and catch a football. And so for me, I thought me playing baseball is what separated me from, you know, other guys in the NFL because I had those very, very detailed ball skills right. along with playing along with playing ping pong too. Oh wow. You 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 were legit. I give you that. You you were legit and on the ping pong table. You know, we used to have a ping pong table for you guys. We used to have a ping pong table in the locker room and GT was legit. You know, I never played um, you know, I, I, I wanted to give him a break, but he, he, he was definitely, he was definitely legit. He was, he was legit. I got, I got to give you that, but you're right, man. It is, it is hard to see that little baseball from so far away, judging the spin and be able to catch it. You know, my sons, you know, both of those guys are playing baseball and, and you know, I'm hitting those guys fly balls. Trash is difficult, man. Trash is difficult, but you balled in high school. You great football player, great basketball player. Tell me about, you know, your recruiting process. You know, when you were thinking about college, I got a question I want to ask you, but I just want to know different different offers. Kind of what were you thinking? Obviously, we know you you got drafted for baseball coming out of high school, forty second round by the Arizona Diamondbacks, but you decided to go to Notre Dame. So, kind of walk me through you know, that process of recruiting for you and the decision that went into, you know, going, not signing with the Diamondbacks and deciding to go to Notre Dame to play football and baseball, actually. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, like, I just, like I said, I, I just love sports. Point blank in the story. And, and my senior year, actually, let me rewind. Um, I got started getting recruited probably the end of my sophomore year into my junior year and that's when it even became real that okay you can go play college baseball or football somewhere that's that's pretty cool so then obviously the letters started rolling in recruiting letters i, I mean i had a whole i had boxes and boxes and boxes i probably still have them my, my mother probably saved them um you know i just getting recruited from all over the country and it was flattering um but i still found a way to stay humble some way and Going into my senior year, um, you know, I still play baseball, football. I let go of b basketball because I knew that, you know, I was probably not playing basketball at 5'10 anywhere. Um, and so I just kind of went through the recruiting process, had some schools that I really, really liked. And, you know, I, I can't decide if I regret it or I'm glad that it happened. But in my recruiting process, I went on one visit. Wow. One official visit out of all what you get five nowadays, five official visits. I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. I went on one visit and it was to Notre Dame. Um, I went to Catholic high school, so I was pretty familiar with Notre Dame. Everyone raved about it, like, oh my God, Notre Dame's recruiting, you should check them out. And so I'm like, okay, well, you know, whatever. So I ended up watching the movie Ruby and you know, all that stuff. <laughs> and then I did a little bit of research. I mean, I literally didn't know anything about Notre Dame at all. Besides, I thought I thought their uniforms are kind of just very boring. And was the classic blue and gold. Anyway, so I, I ended up going on this trip, my official visit to Notre Dame in December as they were as they were preparing for um, a big bowl. I forget which one. I think it was a BCS bowl that they were preparing for. I go, I'm coming from I'm a kid from Tennessee, by the way. I land and I'm in the middle of a snowstorm. Wow. Okay. I'm talking. I don't even know if I have a big jacket, a big enough jacket for this. This Hulk is what they call it, the Hulk. And so I get on campus. I'm talking. I'm talking. My lips are chapped. 
up to my wind burn, the whole nine yards. I'm trying to like visit the, the campus. You can't even see it all because there's so, so much snow. But long story short, I ended up having the time of my life. I enjoyed it. I kind of just like looked around like, can I see myself here for four years? You know, I, okay, yeah, I, I, I can. And so, you know, I went to the practices and, you know, spoke to the head coach. Charlie Weiss had like all of his um, <laughs> Super Bowl rings on. So he was talking to me like, this. he was like, oh, do you need anything? Right now, there's like three or four rings on his on his hand. Um, you know, Golden Knight, I'm gonna, we're going to win games and we're going to prepare you for the league. But ultimately, it came down to a couple of things, which is why I chose Notre Dame. If I graduate, I'm going to have, you know, a pretty good chance to do well in life with a degree from Notre Dame. I had a chance to play baseball and football, which was imperative. Like, if I couldn't play one or the other, I'm not coming. And or actually, there's four things. Third, thirdly, I felt like Raymond, Raymond McKnight and Jeff Samarja were leaving. Um, so mm -hmm. I had a chance to come in and make an impact right away. Little did I know that playing receiver is very, very hard if you're a running back that's turning into a receiver the first day of campus. Did not know that. Um, and and finally, um, Charlie Weiss had won Super Bowls, and obviously the goal is to still be a professional athlete. At this point, I don't know if it's baseball or football still. And so Notre Dame checked the list on all of those. Um, and I just kind of, you know, I committed. I committed the, after that weekend. My parents said, hey, you should take more trips. I said, no. I don't want to take any more trips. I don't want. I don't want a difficult decision. I don't want to. I don't want to go to an SEC school and then there's a whole different part of like that I love. And then I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I said, look, I am happy with Notre Dame. I love Notre Dame, the campus, the people that I met. I'm gonna do this, and I did not look back. And and it, you know, it worked out. It worked out, thankfully. It did. It did. It did. So you leave. No, you leave Tennessee. You go to Notre Dame. Tell me about, was there any culture shock just being in the city? Uh, adjustment, like what was, what was that for you? Going from Tennessee, you already talked about being with the cold, but just, you know, different living. You know, a young kid at this huge university. Cause I know, like I said, when, when I went to New Mexico, it was a huge culture shock for me. Going from Mississippi down south to, to you know, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So going from Hendersonville, to you know, Notre Dame, South Bend, Indiana. What was what was what was that like? I dropped my I dropped my AirPods. I had to find oh, it. Wow. Um, <laughs> so that's why I was like rambling around. Um, but yeah, that, that, you know, I I went through my culture shock. I, I was I went through my culture shock in eighth grade, and and that was when I went to a um, suburban uh, or actually inner city like all black school. And then I then I went in, then I, all of a sudden I went to an all white Catholic high school, or eighth grade school, um, where literally it was like three black kids in the entire school. That's when I went through my culture shop. Wow. Um, for the most part, which I've never really even thought about that until you literally asked that question. Um, and so by the time I got to Notre Dame, it was, you know, it was just like a, it was just a bigger, Catholic high school for me, slightly bigger. I mean, I was only 6,000 undergrad, I think, you know, really? so it wasn't like huge, like 40,000. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to worry about, you know, like big SEC schools. Like it was, it was big enough and, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was perfect. So for me, um, I, I missed, you know, I was already ready for that, but I've always been a person like, and you can probably attest to this. Like I've always been a person. I kind of just adjust to my surroundings. Like, you know, my situation is my situation. I can I have a few choices. I can complain and 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 just you know complain, or I can make the best of it. I can adjust and keep it keep it right on moving. And I just kind of did that. Like honestly, if you talk to people who I went to college with, they would say, hopefully, Golden did college the absolutely right way. Like I, I can, was, I, I can I picture you doing it the right way. Yeah, I excelled at sports. I did just enough you know, in the classroom to, to succeed. Um, you know, I played play two sports, obviously. Um, I was a social butterfly. Like I did, I, I did not want to miss any, 
any types of gatherings. Like it didn't matter when it was. I always wanted to be at them. Like I hung out, like, you know, I hung out with the football guys. I hung out with the baseball guys. I roomed. I had a six man where we had a golfer, a student, me being the only football player, two or three baseball guys and a lacrosse guy. Like we had like a lot of diversity within sports there. Um, you know, I hung out at the hockey house, the lax house. Like I, I, I was all over the place. Like everyone pretty much had had a conversation with me or hung out with me. And I took a lot of pride in, in juggling all that. Um, and I, and I'm sad. I think it has, you know, made me who I am today. It's helped me, you know, put order in my life. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I had to, you know, you had to figure out how to make it all work. And I, and I did. And that's, that's, that's a cool thing about college, man. And, and that's why I love, I mean, I feel like people grow up when they go to college. You, you, you're, you're around so many different people. You put in so many different situations and, you know, I, I don't want to say sink or swim type of thing, but you, you grow up when you go to college, man, you, you have to be able to adjust, especially being an athlete classes. It's uh, it's a lot going on, man. And so for you, like I said, I play with you. I know you're a social butterfly. You're fun. Got to be around. <laughs> Love to have fun. So I'm sure you were having a blast at Notre Dame. <laughs> and I mean, when you talk about Notre Dame, I was a huge Notre Dame fan as a kid, right? Because mm -hmm. where I grew up at, you know, we didn't have cable TV when I was a little kid. So we only had, you know, just regular TV. And Notre Dame always played on NBC. So mm -hmm. I was forced to watch all the Notre Dame games every week. So I was a huge Notre Dame fan growing up as a kid, right? So, I mean, you guys played in some big, big games. I remember, you know, I was happy when we got Bob Davey at New Mexico because I remember Bob Davey came in, I think, after Lou Holtz. And it was just like, wow, man, we got Bob David. We're going to be good at New Mexico. Didn't work out quite that way, but <laughs> I, I was still cool. Um, but, yeah, I, I love Notre Dame, man. Tell me, tell me about that experience, though, of playing at a, at a school like Notre Dame, big, huge stage like that. You're playing against the biggest schools in, in the country in front of 80,000-plus fans. Like, tell me about that, man. What was that like? You know, it was – it was special. Um, the tradition part of Notre Dame is the second and nine, like walking down those those stairs was, and hitting that, that play like a champion sign is, is definitely special. Unfortunately, my time there, our best season, I think we might have won seven games. In my career at Notre Dame, we never beat a ranked team. Really? We went two bowl. I went to one bowl game in my three seasons, which was the Hawaii Bowl, and we won that one, thankfully. But my rookie year or my freshman year, did we went like we won like three games. My sophomore year, we won like six games or seven games, and then my junior year season, we won like six or seven games, and and decided not to go to a bowl. So like my I I didn't get the experience the BCS and the playoffs and you know those really 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 good bowls unfortunately um my i guess my success all came statistically <laughs> while i was there but <laughs> but no matter what our record was man like the passion that our fans had and our student body had was was incredible um you know i wish we would have won more games if i tell you the people that we had on our team you would not believe how we only would win six or seven games a year. Wow. Yeah. So, all right. So I got, I got to, uh, ask you about this right here, man. Um, it's, it's, it's been, you know, broadcast out there. 301 yards, including this touchdown to Golden Tate. Love the celebration, by the way. <laughs> In the Spartan band. Irish get the win, 33-30. <laughs> So, bro, oh, man. tell me, like, what's going on there, man? Like, what's going on in your mind in that moment right there, bro? In my mind, <laughs> it made it made com complete sense what I did. And I'll, I'll, br I'll give you the rundown. I'll break it down. Okay, so <laughs> Jimmy Clausen throws yet another dime to me. 
um, where in the corner of the end zone where only I can get and, you know, running full speed. I catch it secure, get my feet in, but I can't, I can't stop fast enough to like not kill someone. So as I'm running, trying to slow down, I see this one little tuba player, like this little sweet tuba girl. And like, in my mind, I was like, all right, I have either run her over or I can jump and try to land on everybody. And so I said, okay, I'm a jump. I don't know how I thought about this so quickly, but I jump and I go, you know, spread eagle, you know, arms wide, try to legs wide. And do you not understand that the entire Michigan State band just like they just I didn't fall on anyone. I fell on nothing but chairs. <laughs> thankfully I had thankfully I had my uh, <laughs> my my pads on. But uh, yeah, I, it didn't happen the way I thought it would. I thought they were gonna catch me and embrace me. No, they was like, nah, bro. <laughs> nah. So, so Get did, you, did you did like did it hurt? Nah, man, come on. I, adrenaline, I just scored a touchdown. I can hear the crowd going crazy. Like, I'm just, did you, you think? Know, I, did you think that moment would live on the way, the way it has? No, I, I did not think every time we played Michigan State from now on for the rest of the time that that play would be shown. But I do like it. I'm All sure. publicity is good publicity. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you scored a touchdown. Like you said, man, it, without having a lot of team success, you was balling um, big time, man. So you were balling so much that you decided to forego your senior year. Like you left this great University of Notre Dame early, right? You left. What went into that decision to leave school early and, 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 and take your chance at the NFL? Honestly, I did not want to leave and not do my senior year in college. I like I cried when I made that decision. And it wasn't really necessarily tears of joy. It was mixed emotion. Like I like when I told you earlier I loved college. I loved college. And I was so excited about my senior, my senior year. Um, you know, and what I thought we were gonna achieve as seniors, but but also like you know, finally get to live off campus because you couldn't live off campus until you were a senior. That's what really? they paid for it. And yeah, so I, like I did wow. college the right way. I stayed on campus for three years, ready to move off campus. You know, I, I was pr I was pretty much going to be done with my um, degree. So I was going to have some pretty much cupcake type of, right, you know, classes, right. hopefully. Um, but at the end of the day, man, it, it come down to a few things. Jimmy Clausen was entering the draft because he had a heck of a year as well. And that was my quarterback that we came in together. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much going to leave together. He was declaring for the draft. We had just another very under, you know, mediocre season. So we all knew that the head coach was being fired. The guy who recruited me and made all this, he was, you know, he called all the plays. Charlie Wires, he was getting fired. I was coming off, I think, I think, Great. I can't remember. A fifteen hundred yards, seventeen touchdowns, ninety three catches. Yeah, some some really really impressive. Um, but I didn't think I could probably do again with new coaches and new quarterbacks and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, I won a Blitnikoff, the first ever Blitnikoff in right. Notre Dame history. Still to this day, the first you know the only Blitnikoff winner. So, like I was like I I, I there it is impossible for me to stay. Like, it's impossible. I was getting, like, a late first round, second round grade. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was like, man, I, I, I just – I can't – I can't stay. I just can't. I can't. And so I entered the, the NFL draft and, you know, sat around day one thinking I was going to go to maybe Kansas City Chiefs because Charlie Weiss had – you know, he that's where he was at OC. Didn't happen. Sat around pretty much most of day – or uh, the second round – until finally I get this number from a, two, a 206 number. And I'm like, what area code is this? And is this like a bill collector or something? I don't know who this is. Anyway, so they call, um, and it's, it's Pete Carroll. I'm like, what the hell, Pete Carroll? Don't you coach USC? And he's like, hey, I'm the, you know, the new head coach of Seattle Seahawks and, you know, really, really enjoy playing against you, playing against you all these years. You cause as hell. And you're a heck of a player. I think we're going to take a chance on you. 
would you want to be a Seattle Seahawk? Uh, yeah. Of course. Why did I ask that question, bro? I, I, I maybe because of the the whole Eli Manning thing that happened. That's what I said. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but, I said. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, and, and, and in that moment, I'm like, man, yeah, yeah of course I'll be a Seattle Seahawk. But my next question is, where the hell is Seattle? What state is that in? Oh, that's Washington. Oh, okay, so that's by New York. No, bro, that's DC. <laughs> DC over there. No, you're gonna you're gonna be shipped off to the Pacific Northwest. What is that? Is that even in America? <laughs> I'm like, where is this? Uh, but come to find out, it's the pretty much the farthest away from my family I could possibly get. But it did not matter, man, because it was at that point I had a team that had taken a chance on me. And my only goal was to prove them right and to try to make all the other teams pass up on me and be like, dang, what did, the, what did we just miss out on? And honestly, if I could do it all over again and maybe, you know, if I could say, hey, if you say Golden, and if you stay your senior year and you will go the first overall pick or a top 10 pick to who, whatever team you want, I would say, no, nah, I'm good because Seattle was – probably the biggest blessing in my football career. Um, one, because I had the opportunity of winning a Super Bowl, the first ever Super Bowl for that state and that city, which was beyond special, something I will value for, for the rest of my life. And I will make sure my kids even value it. That's how amazing it was. Um, and two, like, I, I didn't have the pressure of, you know, coming in, doing this, like Pete Carroll and, Kippy Brown, my receiver coach, they took their time with me. They let me go through my growing pains. They let me make my mistakes. They let me just go through the natural part of it without being a first rounder. And like, you have to come in and play. You have to produce because everyone's going to be talking crap about you on TV. Mm -hmm. I could, I, I had a chance to just to develop into a player. And when my third year, my third season came finally, it's when I took off. I helped our team a lot. I was a big part of it. And then obviously our fourth season is the year that we won. A Super, Bowl, a Super Bowl, so I would not exchange that for anything. Man, that's that's awesome, man. And and I mean, you did what mostly well, I can't even say mostly what every player wants to do is come in, figure out a way to play, have a coach that obviously coaches them and, and give them time to develop mm -hmm. and then, you know, go and play in a Super Bowl. Not only play in a Super Bowl. You won a Super Bowl. How did that feel to win a Super Bowl so early in your career? Because some people, I mean, most people play their whole career and never even sniff a, a Super Bowl. Or a playoff game. Or a playoff game, that. right? You got plenty of guys who's never even played in a playoff game. Right. And you come in in year, in year four and you've already won one. I mean, it, I was honestly spoiled. I was spoiled rotten being in Seattle. Um I come into Seattle and this organization and the facilities are just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, everything top of the line, like you imagine like, okay, I would assume this is how it is at every professional sports place. You have the best doctors, the best food, the best facilities, best fields, everything. Um, on top of that, you know, my first year, my first year uh, as a rookie, we ended up beating the defending Super Bowl champs in the playoffs because we won, I think we won our division at seven and nine or something like that. We won the division, shocked the world and beat freaking New Orleans Saints. With, mm -hmm. you know, we all remember the beast quake when, money, right. when Marshawn Lynch went crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to playoffs my first year. My second year, we didn't go to the playoffs. My third year, we went to the playoffs, won the first round, came back from like a 21-3 deficit to, you know, from Atlanta, and then they won on the last second. And then my fourth year, we went into that season just thinking, like, yeah, this this is the year. Like, we just felt you like... You guys are stacked, bro. Like, we just know that we're going to win or we're going to go to the Super Bowl. And maybe it was a very, you know, ignorance, bliss, and we really not understanding, like, what it's like to be, be in the pros. But, like, we just felt so good about that year. We just knew if we stayed healthy, we were going to be in the Super Bowl some way somehow and so you know we had a heck of a season for Dude, you know yeah 
y'all were rolling, bro. Yeah, I mean, y'all went to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl wasn't even close. I mean, probably the biggest <laughs> lopsided win in the Super Bowl. It wasn't even right. a question of whether you guys were gonna win. You guys, you guys had that year, man, and and you guys. You guys were tough to beat, y'all. Everything clicked for you guys at the right time. It clicked, Absolutely. and you know it, it, it's nice when that happens. But speaking for you personally, you go through that, right? So world, so whirlwind going on for you right now. You're balling. You just went to the Super Bowl. You win it, and now you're coming off a Super Bowl win, and you're getting to go into free agency. That is what every player probably wants, right? You come in, you ball, you win a Super Bowl, and now I'm free, right? I'm free. Mm -hmm. And so you obviously sign great contract to Detroit to play with Matthew Stafford, Calvin Johnson, some of those great guys. So that's going to lead me to a first fan question. So I, I have fans send in questions that they want to ask you guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the questions that I choose, I try to choose the best questions. And the questions that I choose, the winner gets an autograph picture that I personally sign, mail it off to him. So the question, the first winner is a question from Stephen Long. His question was, what was it like playing alongside Calvin Johnson? And how did he help elevate your game? Man, honestly, playing with Calvin is another one of my biggest blessings. Um, and one of the big decisions on why I went to Detroit, um, you know, I was leaving I was leaving Seattle, who was a run heavy offense, um, to potentially, you know, uh, Detroit, who was a pass happy offense and had Matthew Stafford, who I thought at the time was a hell of a quarterback. And after playing with him, think he's an even better quarterback than I thought at the time. But, um, you know, playing with someone like Calvin, like, I don't think people really understand how great of a guy, an athlete that Calvin was and is. I mean, this guy, when I got there, like, just mentally, I've never really thought anyone was better better than me at receiver or, you know, anyone covering me at corner. But when I got to Detroit, I was like, my mentality was like, I'm coming in to be the number one. And I wouldn't change that mentality for anything. But long story short, like Calvin elevated my game just because he would draw so much attention. Like he got all the double coverage. He got all the best corners. And I just got, I got all the, the other guys. Like I was going to get one-on-one -on -one all day. Okay. I was going to get the number, the number two cornerback. And I, was, I already thought, I, I already thought no one could guard me anyway. So I was just exposing people. So, um, you know, but, the, but it was weird because like I had my best, my best statistical games, and I think thought I affected our team the most when actually Calvin was hurt. Calvin had a big time ankle injury that he was sidelined for three or four games, and and that's when I was putting up 150 yards and we beat the Saints. Or that, that's when we, I think we might have gone to, you know, we went to London and, and upset Atlanta. Mm -hmm. and I had, you know, and had a big game. So I had my smacked them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like I had statistically like great games when he was out, but like, you know, Calvin like made receiver looks so easy and the day that i realized was in camp when he's like hey gt let's run some sprints let's run some you know some half gas i'm like yeah yeah no problem i'm just like all right i'm tired but i'm just gonna keep up with him this guy is just like pumping his arms very it, it looks like easy like it just looks easy knees are up that i don't even think he's trying and me i'm like <laughs> I'm like trying my best to keep up with him. And then that's when I realized like, okay, that's what makes this dude like amazing. Like he does things and it just, it comes so easy for him. Like I'm having to run, a, I'm running a, a goal ball that's thrown per perfectly, but I'm having to like gather my steps and go high pointed to execute the catch. Stafford's throwing Calvin a perfect goal ball. And Calvin is literally just, his arms are like seven feet long. He's already six four, six five, or whatever he is, and he can run like a gazelle. And he's just like, uh huh, you know, very easy. Like, and I was just like, okay, this this is what makes him him. And so that's what kind of that was my coming to Jesus moment, I guess, with Calvin. Like, okay, this is why he is so great. 
Dude, he was a he was a monster, bro. I mean, I I was fortunate enough to play with Andre Johnson and then come right to Detroit and play with Calvin Johnson. He was a monster, bro. I mean, and you're right, man. Just the benefit from having that guy on the other side to where, you know, like you said, you was a number one receiver mentally and physically could be a number one receiver. And to be able to play the two and, and you know, get all the other guys and just expose them. I mean, you really, you really came and, and made a huge impact on our team, man. That was definitely, a, you know, a fun stretch of years. That's when I kind of got to know you because, um, I mean, I was playing and I, you know, I was in the AFC South in Houston. Mm-hmm. So we didn't see a lot of uh, Seattle where I was, where I was, you know, living at. And, you know, we had played Seattle my rookie year. And you were still in college. And, right. you know, in the NFC, AFC, you only play them you know, once every four years. So we didn't play you right. guys. Um, so I would see some stuff, obviously saw the, you know, the Hail Mary, Green Bay, all that <laughs> fun stuff and Golden Tate. Um, but I got to know you in, in Detroit, being on the same team with you, got, getting to see your personality, seeing how hard you work um, and seeing how much you care, you know. And, and so it's one thing you did was you did a lot of work with your golden futures foundation that supports military families so that's going to lead me to our second question from brendan schumer schmucker i think that's his name uh he he wrote in an email but the gist of his question is um how does your foundation support american heroes and how has the covid 19 you know affected your foundation um I guess the COVID-19 hasn't affected our foundation much because all of our events typically are during the season. Those are our big money events where we raise a lot of money to give away. So it, that hasn't affected too much. But um, And then, you know, Gold Future Foundation, like you said, is we just raise awareness and we also try to support our military families any way we can. And there's so many ways to do it. Like we've, you know, we've helped, um, you know, a guy get engaged or a couple, a couple guys get engaged. We've helped, you know, we've done coat drives. We've, we've, you know, there's been medical bills that they need covered that we've, we've happily done. And so the, the sky is kind of the, the limit with that. Like we kind of evaluate, you know, we get a lot of requests every year and we, you know, we think long and hard and we pray on it. And we try to just, you know, we try to be fair to everybody and we just try to really, really, really bless people. But it's honestly, you know, uh, one of my more proud things to have my name a part of is, is giving back, um, making a difference in, in society, but especially our military. Uh, I know my life, my wife really enjoys it. Uh, you know, one of the staples to our life is that to who much is given, uh, much is required. Um, and so we think, you know, I, I think we have a, such a unique platform to affect so many people in a great way. Um, and we just really enjoy u- using that platform. And then we think that's part of the reason why God has given us football is, is, is to bless other people, um, educate other people, um, you know, give perspective to other people. Um, and you truly never know who's watching you know, your day to day and, and kind of going back to Calvin, like, you know, Calvin was one of those guys who was, you know, didn't say much, but had a heart of gold, incredible athlete and was, you know, love giving away time and money. And that's who I had a chance to, you know, be under for a few years, but yeah, um, we're, you know, still trying to look for ways to keep working with our, you know, foundation, our foundation kind of was put to a stop we kind of slowed things down last year because I was in a new city. Um, you know, obviously being in New York, uh, you know, I had a one year old at the time and I just had another son. So we really want to focus on the city where we're in, but also being parents. So hopefully we can get things back going this year because obviously New York, New Jersey market is, is phenomenal at raising awareness, um, and, and getting people what they need. But, uh, you know, we'll see what the future holds. Right, man. So you started, you know, that foundation 
with with your wife and you, and you talked about how uh, you know special she is and and helping you and and all the good things that you guys do man like i said i've been a part of many of your events man it's a great thing that you have going on you give a lot you know we have cleats and you know that's always stuff that you're doing to help those families man so i know they are appreciative of it at least i hope they are and and you guys have definitely impacted a lot a lot of families but you started that foundation with with elise and you know you guys have two beautiful kids and you're a gamer you know you're a golfer uh you're a football player like how do you balance it all man and 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 be able to do all the fun stuff that you do but still be able to spend a lot of time with your family and 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 spend a lot of time with your kids and and and, and be a big part of your life um, i would say our schedule uh, as an nfl player our schedule you know once you get past super bowl it opens wide you know it's wide open like you have nothing but time to spend with your kids and you know my wife and i weirdly were able to plan our you know having our kids in the off season so i can really be there hands-on you know especially in those early you know first you know three to four months, which is important. But, um, you know, we just, you know, my, as far as the gaming, I'm gaming when during their naps and during their, you know, when they go to sleep and then, you know, sneak in some golf whenever I can. But uh, just kind of, you know, I, I try to, we try to outserve my wife. Uh, and she tries to outserve me and it works out for the most part. Um, you know, there's times we bump heads a little bit because I because I get selfish usually with my time a little bit, but you know, just you know, you just kind of find a way. If, if something's important to you, you, just find a way to do it. And, yes. and for me, golf and video games and hang with my kids are very very important. And I make and find time to do all those and stay happy. And and, and that's the thing, man. I, I try to tell a bunch of athletes to this day: if something is important to you, you'll find a way. You know, we, we always used to say, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do it, you'll find an excuse. I mean, and that's just kind of life and just kind of how things are. And you definitely have found a way. So I got something right here too, bro. You talked about your golf game. And, um, you know, I got this. I got this, this clip. That doesn't surprise you, does it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're you're an entertainer, obviously, you know, huge entertainer. But you worked on your golf game. I remember, you know, in Detroit, you guys used to always go and play at the workouts. And if I remember correctly, I think you started out. I think you were swinging cross hand grip, and then you fixed your grip, and obviously elevated your game. And now you're playing in these cool events. What's the coolest course you played on, and who, who is the best non-professional golfer that you've played with? Okay, that's a good question. Um, the coolest course that I played, or I would say, was was Pine Valley, and when I played it, I think it might have been ranked number one in America as far as like courses. Um, so I had I had a chance. Actually, I had a chance to go out there with Roger Goodell and Greg Olson and Larry Fitzgerald um, and, and, and a couple other guys at the time played 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 around there, which was amazing. Like I flew across the country literally just to play one round. But anyway, um, and then what was the other part of that question? Was was the coolest? I mean, who who is the the best non professional golfer that you have played with? Okay. You know, uh, I would have to say Adam Thielen. Really? That dude can play some golf now. Like, he hits the ball a mile. He, he, he has so many different shots in his bag. I mean, it's, it's fun. Like, it's fun to play with him, and it, he puts a lot of pressure on you without saying anything just because he can do so many things. So I play with him at the – American Century uh, Championship, which is out in Tahoe, which is like a celeb am, which I'm unfortunately not going to be able to make it this year. Right. But uh, 
Yeah, man. I, you know, golf. Here's the story about golf. I thought golf was stupid for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. Like growing up, I was like, why would you ever want to play golf when you can go play football, baseball, basketball, even hockey, lacrosse? Like something that takes athleticism until I got to college and I kind of started messing around with it cross handed, of course. Right. And then I, then, I, then I turned pro and, you know, just had, you know, I was born in different cities and that had cool golf courses. And so I started just to play more and play more. And then as I got a little bit better, I started to get hooked more. And, you know, next thing you know, there's days where I wish I was a golfer instead of a football player. Um, but, um, you know, I, I will say for me, golf has opened up so many doors, um, you know, business wise. You know, I've had a chance to develop relationships with these PGA pros and these companies, these very, very cool companies I might have to partner with. Um, and it's just been another, another icebreaker. I think the game of golf right is, is, is taking off. Um, I would, I would encourage everyone to, you know, try it, you know, try it. I, however, I just think golf is the only sport that I feel like it is imperative that you have instruction. You like have I can to. go out there, I can go out there and figure out how to roll a bowling ball or, or hit a free throw or even run or jump or catch a ball. But with golf, it's like, it's completely backwards. So you have, you have to have lessons to play golf, bro. I've tried it. You know, I used to play a lot when I was, um, you know, I first got drafted, tried to do the, you know, the golf thing, you know, everybody say, man, you, you should play golf. So I tried and I used to play a lot, you know, until I started having kids and then I didn't have, you know, five, six hours because I wasn't very good. So it mm -hmm. would take me a while to, to play around. So I just didn't have, you know, the time, you know, my dad plays a lot. He used to play a lot. And, and you know, it's a, it's a cool game. I just, I don't know if right now. I can't get back into it, man. I, I don't have yeah. it in me. I don't have it in me to go back out there on the golf course, man. I just don't. Yeah, and plus for you, like just knowing you, like I remember you would, you know, our, our last years in Detroit, we were going to lunch, the lunchroom, or get dinner, and you'd have your phone out and you'd be showing me highlights of your boys playing baseball, and how you would have like a camera behind them, a camera, <laughs> a third base line, a camera first. <laughs> first baseline and, and you know I, I think you've always had a knack and you've always had a passion for like video videoing and, and photography if I remember correctly and the fact that you, you have a, a chance to like video your, your kids right now and what's you know should be the best time of their life is it, it's pretty pretty fun and so I, I, I understand where you are I, I get it dude that's, that's all I do man video I video. I got so much film with my kids, man. It's it's ridiculous. I'm always, I'm taking pictures at the game. I like you said. I got the GoPros up. I'm I'm. I love I love being around my kids, man. That was one of the reasons why I did retire after ten years because I just was I was done. I, that's all I wanted to play was ten years, and I wanted to be able to come home and and spend time with my kids. I wanted to walk away from the game because I knew if I if I could continue playing football, if I at least felt like I can continue playing then I could probably run around and still play with my kids. And so that was, that was very important to me. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to walk away. But speaking of football, we're getting closer, right? Football is being back. Hopefully, you know, you guys can play. Um, I don't know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be, it's going to be tough, but you just never know. The NFL will figure out a way to, to get you guys out there. How are you feeling about returning, you know, with the COVID and, and all that stuff? And and also with everything going on in the world today you know with the social injustice and all that stuff you know you got basketball players sitting out not going back refusing to play you know the big the big news in the nfl or the big question or discussion has been around players kneeling or not kneeling and, and all that good stuff like what's your thoughts on all that going on with the covid and the social injustice and all that stuff i mean that's a great question i think that needs to be addressed um, all the time. Um, I, I would say with the COVID thing, obviously I, I hope that I have the opportunity to go out and play football this year because I, I just, you never know when it's going to be taken away from you. So, and I'm going to my 11th season. I feel like I can play another four or five, but who knows? But, um, you know, I, I hope there's a season, but me personally, I'm preparing it to report 
as normal in shape, ready to go. But I, I just I don't see how it's possible. I just don't see how you could do that. I mean, our sport, we are literally on average six inches away from the next person. Like who's, you know, right. I'm breathing on these guys nonstop. Like, and I, I don't think there's enough information about the virus right now to to know like what's going on. Like one day I hear that you can get it, you know, you know, this way, but the next day I, I hear that you can't get it this way or it, you know, you're a systematic or a, symptomatic or whatever and like there's just so much going on like i don't know what to believe and so like i just kind of stay at home and go work out but um so hopefully we play football as far as the, the social injustices um i am glad that it's finally been taken serious yes and and why i think it's being taken serious because these fortune 500 companies big billion dollar con uh companies are, are taking a stand they are they are standing up you know for what is you know what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong point no blank in, in a story and if you can't understand that then you're ch you're making a mind a, a choice in your mind to to be that way um you know it's something i've always believed that love is something that comes natural god built us to love right you go find a little two-year-old kid that little two-year-old kid's not wondering you know why his skin color is that way or why can't he play with that toy that that he sees it face value like that's my friend and you see these kids play all and grow up together so hate is something that's i feel like it's been has been taught for a long time and you know it's wrong um right. and I'm, I'm sure we all have been in the wrong of thinking ill of someone or maybe possibly saying something negative about someone and we need to get rid of that but i th i'm i'm so happy that just i feel like justice is starting to be served and i think it's being served because camera phones i hate camera phones most of the time but because we're flat out catching these people in the wrong it's yes. justice is finally being served otherwise yes. maybe i mean i don't know if it would really be served um you know for the the men and women who protect us our police for i have a, so much respect for them um and I, I know that they're putting their lives out there every single day um, but at the same time, I'm no fool. I know that whatever profession you're going to find, there's going to be a bad, there's going to be bad apples everywhere. There's going to be bad lawyers, there's going to be bad doctors, there's going to be bad professional athletes. There's going to be bad ones. We have to get rid of the bad ones. And, you know, uh, you know, we put so much trust into our police force to protect us. And as a minority or a person of color, the confidence, we, we don't have that right now um, at times. And I have, I have members of my family who represent our, our, our police force that I love and have a lot of respect for and feel bad for them at times. I know they are good people, but you know, these, there needs to be quality. Um, the systematic racism, we need to bridge that gap ASAP. Um, you know, you and I deserve the same op opportunity as um, a white person right born into the same situation and and for me to be born and based off my color know that i'm going to have it harder that's just it's unfortunate it's not fair i i i want to be the reason why we you know be part of the reason to change that and i think athletes right now obviously athletes and you know performers and and artists we have such a huge voice to make change on on these subjects and bridge this gap and so i'm excited that you know, finally people are looking past, they're just taking a knee and now they're understanding, you're understanding what the take a knee represents. And now you have these Fortune 500 companies that are, that are okay, I'm, I'm on board, you know? Right. You know, Jeff Bezos is not worried about, you know, losing a few a ignorant Amazon customers because, you know, he's standing up for what is right. And so that makes me happy. And I think we still have such a long way to go but I think we were making the right steps. I mean, cause uh, you know, before, you know, George Floyd, okay, yeah, we'd hear about uh, um, yet another man of color, woman of color being murdered at a stop, uh, you know, stoplight or, right. you know, for not having the correct windshield wipers or some, something super ridiculous that you should be able to go home to. Um, you know, I, it would kind of be, you know, on CNN today, tomorrow, next day, then gone. Mm -hmm. And now it's it's sticking, it's sticking. And so now I think change 
is some serious change is being made and I'm glad that I'm experiencing it. I'm glad I'm going to be able to potentially help bridge this gap. I know the New York Giants, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that every team in the NFL is doing something or taking some initiative right. to, to make this change. Um, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I, I, I remember being, you know, in Detroit, the first kind of the first wave of it and everybody's trying to decide, you know, what's going to happen, who's going to do this. And, you know, you had people who didn't feel comfortable kneeling, but wanted to do something. Um, I, I think, I think, like you said, I think it's sticking. I think it's finally hitting. And, you know, with the use of the cell phones, you're not just hearing about certain things, being able to see some of the stuff that's happening in this world. Mm. I mean, and finally getting the big companies to get behind it. You have to have that because at the end of the day, the, the people at the top of those major companies most of the time are your, your white American men. So mm. if they don't ever get behind it, so to have those guys, man, I, I think it's going to, I think it's going to be a difference this year. I think, I think we'll start to see some things. Hopefully, um, you know, we can, we can continue these conversations. I said last week, they're going to be uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, but mm -hmm. you can't grow unless you move out of your comfort zone, man. So I, I, I really, I really appreciate you, you speaking on that because like you said, as, and, as athletes and entertainers, we got We got to let our voice be heard. Go ahead. And, and one more thing, I, you know, I don't know how many, uh, you know, white followers or, white people who are listening live or, you know, have been following all this, but I, I truly think um, in, or, in order for there to be true change, I think our white people have to educate themselves as well. Um, you know, you don't, you can be slow to speak, but just like start reading up on things, start having conversation with conversations with your black friends, because like, no matter, you may, I can't really expect a white person to understand what, what I feel when I'm around, um, a, a policeman or woman, or you know what what fears I have for my children. I can't really you know, but you can have these conversations where you understand. Okay, like this is my black friend that I know his heart. I know who he is as a person. Like, hey, um, you know, you know, George or Jim, whatever it is. What what have been your experiences with the cops? Um, you know, you know what what do you feel? And so if you can just start having these conversations, you might it might give you a perspective because like at the end of the day. We all, you, we all are worthy. I don't care what your color are. We are all worthy. We are all made in God's image, and we deserve the same chances, just as as humans. Point blank, right. story. I don't care if you're man, woman, brown, black, purple, pink. Look, COVID don't care what color you are. Right. So why the hell should we? Right, and I think, I think that's been the biggest thing that I've I've kind of wanted to see and, and at least stress because. I know we, 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 we're, we're saying a lot. I don't want people to feel like as, as black people, we're asking for handouts. We're not asking for any handouts. We just want the same opportunity. We just want mm -hmm. it to be an equal playing field. I want to feel like if I get pulled over by a cop, I'm going to have a normal traffic stop. I was either wrong. Hopefully he's pulling over me because I did something wrong, speeding or whatever. He's going to write me a ticket and I'm going to get to go home and see my kid. I don't mm -hmm. want to feel like, oh, snap, I just got pulled over. I hope I make it home. Mm -hmm. That's all. We, and, and, and then when it comes to jobs and everything else, we just want an equal opportunity. We don't want any handouts. Right. We, we work for everything that we, that we want. Um, we just got to even the playing field, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited that you spoke on that, man. I've, I mean, I've actually kept you longer than i want to i try to do these shows in an hour but you know when you get veteran guys that have talked to the media so much they know how to answer questions they know how to talk I and mean, it's been great man so i uh want to go to a different segment of the show though okay real quick real quick you've been great we're getting ready to let you go i know you got some stuff you got to do but before we do i mentioned earlier that we have a special guest tonight okay so a few weeks ago 
I was talking about um, a United Way uh, virtual hangout. Okay. Well, the winner of that hangout was this guy named Carl Williams. Okay. So he had different options that he could choose from. And he chose to come into the DB room and be on the show. Okay. He chose to come in and be on the show. And so I'm, I'm, I want to bring him out. I have him connected. Um, I have him connected. He has a question for Golden. And, you know, we'll see if some other people have some questions before we let Golden leave. So I want to bring him out. If, if you're on, can you, can you turn your, uh, can you turn, turn your camera on? I I have you in, but I I, I don't see your camera. I, I can't see your face. Call it call if you're on. Can 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 you turn your camera on? We can't we can't see your face. I I have your your shot. You called in, and uh, we got you. While we wait on him to hopefully turn his camera on. I don't know why we're not seeing him. Um, I don't know why we're not seeing him. But while we wait for him to get his camera fixed, I'm going to check these questions up here, man. Dude, you said you was going to kill it, bro. You, you killed it, man. Thank you. Thank Dude, you. You killed it, bro. And like I said, do this for me. Do this for me while we wait. You, you, you talked about a lot of different things, man. But like I said, I, I like to talk about you know, and inspire, we got these high school kids. And that's why I ask you a lot of questions about your draft process, um, your, your recruiting process. There's different experiences that you've had because, you know, people need to know that type of stuff. They need to know what's going on. They need to know how to make decisions. They need to, they need to hear your stories. If you have some advice, you know, just for some high schoolers that, you know, just need to know about grades or, or working hard or just anything like that um you know let, let, let them have it man i would say my grandmother just and my mother told me this growing up and it's a very cliche saying but there's no substitute for hard work um and it's kind of stuck with me you know throughout my life um that that's something that people notice people see that and what's going to give you an edge in life is hard work. What's going to get you give you an edge uh, in this job process is hard work. I mean, if you're qualified just as much as the next person, but you know they can see and feel the drive, the heart, the passion, and the hard work that you have. I think you're, it's going to get it's going to gain you an edge. Um, as far as you know, for for me, trying to ba balance sports and a social life um, and school. It helped. It helped me in, you know, now um, as I'm, you know, later in my career, maybe you know, gonna get into the the, the more business world at some point. But you know, uh, take advantage of like balancing all that stuff that you enjoy as a kid, um, because when you get to, you know, college and after that, you're gonna have to balance things too. Maybe, it might, maybe it's your work. Also, you know, maybe it's a couple jobs to balance on top of your dating life, on top of your friends, on top of like whatever hobbies you have, you're going to have to balance something at some point. And I think at an early age, I kind of taught myself how to do those things, um, you know, not even really knowing just because I enjoyed it. But um, as far as school, um, school, I, I know it's not fun for some people. Some people, it's harder for some people. But honestly, like even in football, like we're we spend most of our time in the classroom classroom. And what separates me personally and why I've been playing this game for so long is because of the in the classroom stuff, understanding coverages, really understanding, um, you know, what defenses are doing, the offense, what my job is, why these routes are that way. So like although you're although I haven't been in school in 10 years, going on 11 years like the same basic fundamentals of studying and the participation and understanding are, are pretty much the same. 
Um, and I, I would like to imagine that in whatever job you, you take, um, you know, you're going to have to have that foundation to succeed. And you don't want to be teaching yourself how to learn, you know, once you get into the workforce. So, right, right, right. That's man. That's that's great, bro. That that's great. So we we got we got Carl Carl in. What's up, Carl? We got him in. All right, all right. Can you hear me, Hold fellas? On. Can we hear you? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. We can hear you. All right, cool. Showtime, good to hear you. Yeah, King. Oh, my God. Hey. Love you. Big fan. Oh, thank you. Hold on, man. Glad, glad to have you on for uh, GQ. I love you, too, man. Uh, sorry that took a minute. Sorry that took a minute. That's all on my end. That's not. That's nobody's fault but mine. Um, hey, Showtime, well, I got you. One, it, it's good to hear you guys talk on uh, the George Floyd situation. I am just 15 minutes north of Minneapolis myself right now. So it's that that was actually one of my questions for you, GQ, later is how how can I as a white guy reach out and talk to other people in the black community and like bridge these gaps? Because we we're in hard times like we're it, it's it's rough around here. Usually it's a uh, Minneapolis is a very loving open community it's rough times around here it's hard to talk so just to have you guys bring that forward and have that as the topic of conversation immediately means a lot to me and you know i i, I would like advice right now because i know you guys were in the, the locker room with guys like jim caldwell and anquan bolden who like i believe talked in front of congress or senate on these matters before so it's 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 something that needs to be talked about right off so uh i'm, I'm sorry to bring the mood down i i know no, i was no, supposed no, to have no, like i want to kiss your butt show time <laughs> this yeah is it's it's absolutely what we need right now. absolutely GT, GT, so like to... yeah gt you can you can uh you can talk on that real quick i'm still trying to adjust some of his uh some of his shots okay yeah um you know i, was, I would I would say kind of what I said earlier, just, just have these conversations and just see how people of color feel, how they've been treated um, at times. And, and, you know, it might give you some insight, but um, for, for my black people there or, or my, all my people, really, um, I, I would say if you want to make true change, you got to go to these city council meetings. You have to go, you know, these meetings where you have a voice. Um, I would say I would encourage everyone to vote. That is your voice. Um, you know, things like that uh, is, is how you make true change. Because when you, when you go to these city council meetings, you're, you know, you're proposing new laws and you have a chance to, you know, show why these laws are, you know, can be important or how they can help different people, um, you know. And, 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 and while I got it, like I, I, I hear, you know, Black Lives Matters, yes, 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 absolutely. And I hear people saying, no, well, all lives matter. Yes, all lives matter, a hundred percent. But right now, um, I, and this is the best, you know, scenario. Uh, this is what I keep telling people: like when you go into a neighborhood and there's a burning house, a whole neighborhood, but there's one burning house. You don't try to put the fire out of all the entire neighborhood. You you, you get the house that's burning. It's the house you, is on fire, and that's the one you try to all save. Right now, are under attack. Right now, black lives are under attack, and it's right. it's it's very visible obvious and you know at some point you know i see a lot of people getting angry and uh i think one thing that i could a, a talking point that i could bring to the black community because i want to share things too is like there's all these super conservative people who are just so angry and like you know everybody is uh hurt by uh, rioting and stuff but you know what like you in uh in Minneapolis, we didn't just see George Floyd. We saw Philando Castile, and I believe it was a a, a tourist woman who came and uh, was accident who who was shot by the police. And uh, you get to the point where you you hold signs, you go to city council meetings, you go, you do all these things, you vote, you vote, you vote, you hold the sign the second time, 
And eventually, like, you get so angry that you pick up a rock at some point. Like, it's it's only the natural boiling over point. Like, we're we're all upset, and it's it, it's it's only the natural thing. So it's like I want to just share share with other people it's like i i understand and like there's so other there's all these other people are like what about personal property it's like well what about people's lives you know at what is the price of one man's life versus a police department i'd argue one man's life more valuable here's what i know about george floyd he was a bouncer at a club that my cousin went to on fridays for their dance shows and he was well loved by the community that sounds more valuable to me than uh, a thousand buildings. I don't know. More valuable than a statue, something like that's a man's life. So that, that, that's just one thing I want to express. It's like, I, I value you guys more than I value bricks. Mm -hmm. And like, I, like if that's something you should say to, to these people who don't get it, it's just like, you are more valuable than rocks and bricks and statues and that, you know. So, sorry Absolutely. to be rambling. I, I just got no, a lot no. of feelings. And I know the conversation was on this, and I had to express them. So. No, I, we're, I, I like it. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. I appreciate uh, no it, problem, man. No problem, I, pre I, appreciate, right. I appreciate Golden getting on, man. I know you got to go. I'm going to let you go, man. Like I said, I thank you. Sorry, fans. We didn't have time to get to some questions. I had a lot of, had a lot of questions for Golden. So appreciate Golden for coming on. Stick around. We're going to talk to Carl. He got some cool, cool, cool stuff going on. So let's give Golden a round of applause. And peace out, man. See you. See you next time, brother. Yes, sir. I'd love to come back on, man. This is fun. We got to get you on during the season, man. Yeah. We can talk some football. We, we, we've gotten to know you now. So we, let's talk some football, talk about some plays, you know, talk some offensive, defensive stuff, and uh, have a good time. I'm down. I'm down. All right, man. Appreciate you, brother. All right, brother. Y'all take care. Nice seeing you, Carl. Love you, good Tate. Yeah, King, man. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> let me uh, let me disconnect. Cool. So now, got a little time with Mr. Carl, man. This is uh, this is cool, man. This is the first time we've done this. Um, and I'm glad you, I'm glad you were able to come on the show. So congratulations on winning. Um, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Really you, appreciate uh, it. <laughs> you, you've kind of been on. You've kind of been on a run lately, and then you, you won the the the. Um, you won. Uh, I, I was virtual. actually gonna say that I got the fan question, and like I, I, I met that meant a lot to me too because uh, Nino uh, Quandre Diggs is one of my favorite Lions players of all times. I always say he hits like a monster truck and stuff. Like that meant a lot to me, and to get that uh, picture from you signed, like that's going in the middle of my big uh, <laughs> Lions display, and like that that's a huge thing because I, I bleed blue like to the core. Well, that, well, that's cool, man. So, tell tell me, like, what what made you participate in the United Way event? And you know, did you think you would win it? Oh, you know what? Uh, of course, I didn't think I win it. Like, you know, the thing is with uh, the United Way thing, it was just like, well, one, you and I, I saw Frank Rag now uh, from mm -hmm. the Lions were also doing it, and my my philosophy on uh, on charity in general is. If you have the money, drop the change from your uh, purchase into the donation thing. You know, spend it if you fe if you're fed. You got clothes on your back. You got a house. You know, just do it. And I never thought I'd win. And when I got the email from the United Way, I was in the middle of a five mile run, and I see the notification on my phone. It's just like you won a thing with Glover Quinn, and I just started wheezing like. <laughs> Well, this is over. This workout's done. So, like, no, I didn't think that was gonna happen in a million years. Now, man, that's cool, man. Well, that was that was a great thing you did, man. Obviously, oh. your donation is gonna help, man. It's gonna definitely help some people. We appreciate it. Um, I'm glad to actually get to speak to the winner because you know you, sometimes you have these cool things going on, and sometimes you don't see the winner, and you always wonder who won, like. Did anybody win? Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you participated and I'm glad that you won. I'm glad you decided to come on the show, man. It's cool. So you are the first actual fan, I guess, to be in 
live in the DB room. So kudos to you, man. We're going to give you a round of applause. Oh, man. I don't even deserve that. Don't even deserve that. I got, I got, to, I got to point out the first offensive person you have on the DB room. You bring him on, you bring on Golden Tate, and you bring a clip of him jumping into a band and then into a sand trap. You immediately roast the offense that you are still on your defensive set. Like, you are still on it. Like, have a a wide receiver on, and the DB is on him in a second. Like, that meant a lot to me. You couldn't even help it. You got got to put that little stuff out there, right? You got got to, you know. You know, you gotta you gotta play with him a little bit, have fun. I know Golden man, he's a he's a good guy, man. I knew I knew he would laugh about it. And knowing his personality, I wanted to know what he was thinking when he jumped into the band. I mean, I obviously knew. I obviously well, knew yeah, it's, it's a questionable moment, right? I mean, but when you play at Notre Dame, just from the games that I've seen, there's so many people standing around, and so you catch a end, touchdown like that, you're running through the back of the end zone. You're either gonna jump on them or you're just gonna bulldoze right through them. So. He decided to jump, and it was a it was an epic it was an epic play, and so that's uh, I've seen a, cool. a lot of Golden Tate highlights. I'd never seen that one before, so that was special. <laughs> that was special. I'm glad you brought that to life. Cool, man. So you 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 say you live in, in Minnesota, man, but you're a huge Lion fan. How how did that happen? Are you from Detroit, or are you just you know liked how the Lions come up to Minnesota and and whoop up on the Vikings? Oh, that is part of it. That is part of it. But you know what? I'm uh, I'm actually born Fairbanks, Alaska, so I got to choose any team I wanted. Moved down to here when I was a kid. And honestly, I just got sick of the Vikings. And when they signed Brett Favre, who I was raised my entire childhood to just despise this man. And they went ring chasing they signed this guy that I was just raised to just, mm, in my entire soul, I was just raised to despise him. I was done with him. And other than, like, uh, Jared Allen, there weren't that many personalities on the team I liked anymore. And young Matty Stafford comes out, pops his shoulder out of his uh, – or his arm out of his shoulder, goes back in for a play, wins my heart. And I was like, this is my team. I've always been an underdog, man. I just – Detroit Lions are just, I don't know, something about them, something about the Honolulu Blue just feels right, feels right. I don't know. Oh, that's cool, man. I'm sure, like I said, we came up to Minnesota. I know during my time there, we came up to Minnesota and, you know, we put it we put it on those guys guys a couple of times. But it was always fun. I love, I mean, I actually love the, the new stadium in Minnesota. Um, so glad. Yes, I do. Are. And part of it is because of you. October 1st, 2017, yeah. I was in Section 123 in U.S. Bank Stadium. Uh, you punched the ball out of Adam Thielen's hand at the in the fourth quarter. Uh-huh. And after the game, he tweeted, or he said to the Star Tribune something. He said, I don't even feel like uh, they did much to win the game, but we just gave it up. I was like, well, at the end of this game, I don't know if you heard about this guy, GQ, right. but he – Punch the ball right out of your hands. I feel like that might have been something to do with the end of the game. No question. So I, I love that. The, the Caldwell years were good to me in that stadium. Oh, yeah, no question. And I should have I should have put on one of Golden's clips because, you know, we played a, a overtime game out there, and Golden, man, catches a the game-winning touchdown and flips in the end zone. So I should have yeah. play, played yes. that one right after I played him jumping in the, in the band. <laughs> But no, if, if we weren't having a serious conversation, I was going to say my thank you to GT to Golden Tate would be uh, that flip into the end zone. I believe that was a Thanksgiving game, and I'm surrounded by all my Viking fans, family, and I'm the only person wearing my Lions cap 24 7. So I'm losing it. Everybody else is miserable while I'm eating into the turkey. That was a gift from heaven from that man, and I owe him until my death for that moment. And wow, a, a thousand other highlights I can't think of off the top of my head. Cool, man. Well, let's get into it, man. So, you know, we, we talked a little bit um, through email, Facebook, and tell me a little bit about, you say you have this, this hot sauce that, that you are creating. Tell me a little bit about oh. it, man. All right, so uh, I've always been a fan of just eating in general. I love on Sundays to make a big meal with uh, my friends, you know, 
And uh, so me and my best friend, we want to start Baby Hondo Hot Sauce. We are uh, making uh, a bunch of different types of hot sauce. We have 110 or so different types of peppers in the ground at the moment. Uh, or I'm sorry, 110 pepper plants in the moment and about 35 to 40 different varieties, uh, Carolina Reapers, Naga Vipers. So we just like hot food. We love eating together. I love feeding people because I feel like it's a very bonding experience and I love giving my friends food. It feels very rewarding. So uh, Baby Hondo is the name of our two dogs, Baby and Hondo. Uh, we okay. love them very much. Uh, want to name the sauce company after them. And uh, yeah, we just wanted to pursue this. It is just a passion of ours. I think we make awesome hot sauce and uh yeah it's it's just uh what we want to do because right now i'm a factory worker and uh i don't like that as much as i like feeding people so right, yeah it's right. just a passion right right well that's cool uh, do y'all have any that's for like sale anywhere online or y'all just in you know the what? process uh, of, of of creating we we are going to set up uh, Baby Hondo, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Right now, what we're most focused on is actually having sauce and peppers to give people because, like, what's what's in reality is what's more important than what we hype in, in the universe. And we do have some great stuff, and we are going to uh, put it on YouTube, Instagram very soon, and... That will be available through my Twitter at Carl Alden, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll have that all then. But uh, right now, it is just a dream in our hearts, and we're following that. <laughs> That's cool, man. Hey, it all starts that way, man. It starts that way. This right here, this show right here. Heck, man, it, it this happened overnight for me. You know, I was laying in the bed one night, and I was just like, man, I'm gonna start telling stories. And I just started telling stories and then it grew from one thing to the next to the next. And now, I mean, I've on live live stream interviewing players and, and having fun, man. So that's cool, man. It starts with a dream. It, 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 you have to have a passion for it. And you also told me about you have this passion for for art. You know, you do some some art stuff. I got some stuff pulled up here. Tell me a little bit. Oh, about awesome. I'm glad that you grabbed that. Appreciate it. I actually have that like a couple of them around me right now. Yeah, that's uh, I'm Carl Alden. If you look me up, flows in motion. Carl Alden's kind of easier to find him on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Uh, yeah, I do a lot of Eastern inspired art, uh, a lot of pop culture inspired stuff. Uh, that's like basically a mandala. That's one of three pieces. I, I like to spend a lot of time on one piece so you can kind of just get lost in it and uh yeah that's that my art is something that i love like behind me I, i'm moving right now but i got a couple of my paintings behind me that are unfinished and uh yeah i i love doing it i will always do that uh i make uh not only just paintings and illustrations but i also make like custom shoes and hats and stuff I like that your, like i saw it on your ig i'm glad i'm glad you, you saw that like i'm very proud of it it's something like I don't ever have to uh, blow up doing art or uh, making hot sauce or something, but these are things that I'm going to do forever. Like get ready for to be bothered by me with hot sauce and uh, a bunch of paintings. You don't have to like it. You can just scroll. They're going to be there until I die. And you I have to deal with it. Oh yeah, hey man. Oh no, I think I, I think I froze on you. You froze, you froze a little bit, but but it's all good, man. I I, I love that you know you you have something that you like, man. And that's that's the thing about life is you want to be able to do things that make you happy. Um, I talked about it earlier. Yeah. I walked away from the game after ten years. Why? Because I wanted to be able to live my life, and while I was playing. I lived a certain way because when I was done playing, I wanted to be able to do what I wanted to do, not what I had to do, not what I was forced to do, but I wanted to be able to do whatever it was that I wanted to do. And so over the years, over the year, I just kind of got into different things and tried this. I tried that. I tried this. And I finally found something that I was like, you know what? 
I love doing this. I love talking to people, inspiring people. I love putting people's stories out there because I'm a big believer that we all, everybody has a story and being able to put it out there, yeah. you just never know. And, and as a player, if you can inspire one person, you, you, you've done a great job. And so you never know who needs to hear that about the hot sauce and, and you, you never know who's into art and just the connections that, that you can, that you can make and, and, and the lives that you can make a difference in. So I love it, man. I love that you're doing what you want to do, man. So kudos to you, brother. Oh, thank you. And kudos to you. And Hey, I'm glad that you are doing this. You are getting better at these interviews every week. You are your passion for this, uh, art form shows you and uh i'm glad that you were doing this because i'm sharing this with uh not just your interviews which i love as a lions fan but i'm sharing the defensive information with like a coach that i know because i think you'd be great at that but i'm glad you're sharing your passion and doing what you want to do too and i i really appreciate your time and uh thank you for doing this for charity man like the fact that you were doing this with your free time means a lot to me so appreciate you bro no doubt man i, I appreciate you man i appreciate you so Yes, share that stuff with with coaches, man. And and I know you kind of didn't say it, but I feel like I'm a coach in in the room. You know, I feel like I'm a coach. I feel like I get to talk to and hopefully coach tons of people. You know, if I was on a team, you know, I would be just subject to those guys that I have the 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 luxury to work with. But on this platform, I get to talk to so many different people, give advice, tell stories, help so many people. Hopefully I can impact somebody's life. So it's cool. It's cool. To it, me, it's man. absolutely true. And I'm glad that you're using this medium because if, if you did not have this platform and I was talking to you, I would be telling you absolutely 100%. You need to be a coach because <laughs> I remember you on the field and you directing people. I remember your mind was the strongest part of your game. No offense to your physical abilities, right, right. but your mind was very strong in your game. And the fact that you are sharing that means a lot to me, but I won't steal any more of your time. I feel like you're trying to wrap up right now. Oh no, man. I'm just trying to, I just, I want to, you know, give you, give you some time, man. I, d I definitely want to talk about your, 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 your hot sauce and, and just cool stuff that you got going on and put that stuff out there and then answer any questions that you might have for me. You know, you got, got a chance to, to, to rap with golden. I think that was cool. That was a great segment, a great question by you. Glad you asked that question because I do feel like there has to be the conversations between the blacks and the whites. We have to educate you guys as to what life is like. And you guys have to be open to wanting to learn, wanting to understand and wanting to see how they can help. So I'm so glad that you brought that question and you started with that question and you didn't get caught up in the fact that, Hey, I'm getting to talk to two professional football players. and I just want to geek out. No, I'm going to ask and talk about a real life situation right now. I'm gonna put no, I'm gonna no. Put believe me, right now, I like so there. There's a cool. million plays that you guys uh, like gifted me with. Me and my buddy Church just yesterday were talking about the 2014 season and a a clip compilation of just how beast mode you went that year. And yeah, that's the that's one of the things I want to talk about. Of course, like I I got a lion right there on the hand. I'm I'm a freak. <laughs> Like I like it's absolutely something that matters to me, but I am just north of Minneapolis. Like these people, like everybody is is just people. We all got to talk. We all got to share a world. So that's 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 number one. Ah! Oh no, G Kill, what's good? Come back. <laughs> I'm still here. All right, all right, all right. We got you. We got you. No, I don't have you. All right, all right, all right. All right, bro. So, uh, if that's I can, uh, that's a, that's a, that's question, a, a little fan right question to end this thing. Um, that's a better spot for right. you right there because I can see you now. All right, awesome. All right, so, uh, shoot, shoot, bro. I I don't know if I have one great fan question for all to wrap this up. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we talk about like all the things I want to talk about. Like I. Hey, let me let me just say this. Uh, all right, so I I am such a Lions freak that I will not just watch you know like every play, every highlight thing, but I will watch 
in the locker room thing. I will right. watch the the post game type thing, locker interview, ladder, locker interview with every single player. Uh-huh. And I remember you, GQ. Uh-huh. I remember how you would answer every question when it was a pointed question, and how you would take. My time. A little pause. You would think about every single thing, and you would come up with a perfect, like, political negotiated answer every time because you were under so so much watch. So I guess this isn't a question. It's just an observation. But it is so cool to see you change and have you just freely speak on stuff because I remember just, like, you, like when Kyle Mikey or Justin Rogers shout out <laughs> uh, uh-huh. would ask you a question, uh, you would just you would be you would be the most patient. And you would give the best answers out of anybody, but it would just take three and a half minutes longer. Right. And okay. I, I'm so glad to watch you just grow as a host, grow as a as a person, and like just do this because you're like you're a superstar athlete. But you have changed on this other front of a media personality, and you're growing as that, and that's that's cool to see too. Because like, I don't know, I don't know. That's just an observation. But yeah, you know, when I was when I was answering those questions, you know, when when you when you're answering questions for for the media, you you talk through the media. So you're you're trying to put out a message. So sometimes you're not just answering their question. You're putting out a message. So when I think about the question, it's like, okay, what message do I want to put out? So a lot of times after games, you know, if we won or lost, you know, you're talking to your teammates that may hear it. You're talking to the fans who may need to hear things. You're talking to uh, Cody. You're talking to so many people. So you have to speak through the media and articulate yourself know what you're talking about. And then obviously also when you're talking to the media, they're asking you questions, right? So guess who's in control? You they are. are. No, you are. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to say they're going to edit it. I thought, no, okay, you got me. You got you're, me. You're in control. So you can take however long as you want. You don't have mm-hmm. to answer anything. You can say oh. what you want to say. You're in control. So many times people feel like the media is in control. Yeah, the media can report certain things or edit certain things, but the full interview is always out there somewhere, right? They might GQ, pick out a piece. It, it, just like on the line. field, you are playing 3D chess. You are a move ahead of the other guy. I, I, that that is, is smart. That's how it that's is, That's a smart man. man. So that, that that's how it was. I love to talk to the media. I love to talk to people. Hence why I'm here now talking it up with you guys, man. So it's been it's been cool, man. I'm glad we got a chance to do this. I'm glad we got a chance to get you on. This is actually something that I want to start doing on some of the shows. It's like having fans be able to call in and 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 ask and talk to their favorite players because that's, I want this to be engaging. And I know right now in, in my streams, I don't have a lot of time to answer and get to some of the comments because I want to get to know these players and I want to get their stories out. So I'm, I'm interviewing those guys. And once I bring them back the second time, then it's going to be fun. Like, Hey man, let's just shoot the breeze with golden. You know, we already know who he is. Let's just have fun. Let's ask some questions, put some plays out. Let's talk about them. You know, let's get all these big time guys in and just have a good time, man. So I've kept, I've kept my, my guys on the stream. We've been going almost, almost two hours, man. So Yes, it's, it's uh, it's been it's been a good one, man. I'm so glad you was able to come on, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you donating. I appreciate, I appreciate you sending you. the question, man. And I appreciate you being a Lions fan, man. Good <laughs> for you. Oh man, that that's that's in the blood. That's no that's no thing. Uh, thank you to you for your time and donating your time to charities and the United Way specifically. They do a lot of great work, and uh, yeah, couldn't appreciate it enough, man. Good night. Love you, man. All right, man. Appreciate you. All right, my people, that was it. I'm glad you guys stuck around. That was a, that was a long show, um, but I had to do that. That was a part of my uh, thing with United Way and charity. I had to do that, and I think I think it was good. I think it, I think he did a great job. So shout out to Carl for coming on, talking about his hot sauce, but also not being afraid to have that question about the social uh, injustice going on in our country and want to know what he can do to help out. So 
Thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy what Golden State had to say. He's a great, great, great guy. Um, if you wasn't a fan, I hope you are a fan now. Like I said earlier, please share these with somebody. Somebody may want to hear it, snippets of it. Um, but I hope you guys had a great uh, Father's Day weekend. Hope you guys have a great weekend coming up. Peace out. I'm trying to follow my Instagram before, for the next guest. I'm working on a special guy. He said he was going to do it. I'll find out and confirm it. But follow my Instagram. Get your questions in for next week once I put it up there. And I love you guys, man. And I have to, I have to do this. I say it every time. But I have to, I have to do this when I, um, when I do a show. It's just, like, important to me to do. So I'm going to do it. At least I'm going to try to. I can't hear it. But where are we at? I don't know where it's at. It's not playing right now. But I like to have my theme music. Dun 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 dun. Love you guys, man. Peace out. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, tune in. Check out the videos. Peace out.